Everyone likes to be accepted, to be acknowledged as a part of the crowd, to be included. But in the days of our deliverance, will that continue to be the case or will we be rejected? Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number one of a week of special Pesach readings. For this first day, we go to the book of Shemot or Exodus chapter number 12, and we begin reading with verse number 29. And it came to be at midnight that Yahweh struck all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all of his servants, and all the Mitzrites. And there was a great cry in Mitzrayim, for there was not a house where there was not a dead one. Then he called from Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Arise, go out from the midst of my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve Yahweh as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you have said, and go, then you shall bless me too. The Mitzrites were strong on the people to hasten them away out of the land, for they said, We are all dying. Israel had been in the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt for several generations at this point. Maybe they had come to think of themselves more as Mitzrites than even Hebrews. But through the series of the plagues and the leadership of Moshe, Yah began to change that reality to where they began to understand we're Hebrews and there is a sense of distinction now upon us. Having been in America, my family, since around 1620 or 1630, a long, long time, there's, there's no other way to see ourselves but as Americans until recently, until some years ago, where Yah began, at least in my particular generation, to change our focus and help us to understand, yes, you were born into America, and in many ways you are an American, but... Your spiritual root goes back to a land, to a people far in the past, and I'm calling you back to it. So I've learned to see myself as an exile in a very bountiful, abundant, and beautiful land of exile. Thank you, Father. But is that not even a greater challenge to us to want to walk away from what seems to be so prosperous and so liberating and based on freedom, at least in the past, to go to an uncertain future in a land that is currently in great turmoil. So we are awaiting the appearance of our Messiah, that Yeshua will come in the sky and gather us to him and return us to the land miraculously. We are believing for that. The coming Pesach is about getting focused on being delivered on a moment of time that is seized where we recognize we can't stay, we have to go. To the extent that as it was on that one night many, many thousands of years ago, they were thrust out, made to go out. They were not given any choice. You can't stay. Pharaoh said to Moshe, get out of here. Take these people, your flocks, your herds, everything, and get out. We don't want you anymore. How would we as Americans in our minds feel if our fellow citizens and our government said to us, you can't stay? You have to go. We don't care where you go, but get out of here. Would that hurt our feelings? Would it encourage our spirit? Would we see it as an open door or a panic button? No one wants to be rejected. No one wants to be isolated. No one wants to be ostracized. But we're told in the word that Yah's people are going to become distinct and separate. Matter of fact, recently the father spoke to me concerning 
uh, distinction. I was asking, Yah, where is the line of distinction concerning those who have died with COVID? Why are your people among those who are perishing? Why are we seeing the death of the righteous? Where is the line of distinction? And the Father's words were, without separation, there can be no distinction. So we're going to need to learn to separate ourselves from the current world that is around us to a place where we become distinct. And it is that distinction that may cause us some problems. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 10, Yeshua said this in verse 21 and following, And brothers shall deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children shall rise up against parents and shall put them to death. Verse 22 says something, although it's uncomfortable to read, but this is what Yeshua said. You shall be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. For when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For truly I say to you, you shall by no means have gone through the cities of Israel before the son of Adon comes. A taught one is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the taught one to become like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for whatever is covered shall be revealed, and whatever is hidden shall be made known. What I say to you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the being. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both being and body in Gehenna. So Yeshua is telling us, they hated me. If they hated me, then you follow me, they're going to hate you. Now, one might argue, well, the world loves, at least they love the presentation of Yeshua, uh, more properly understood by the name of Jesus, in movies and in and media and and memes and so forth, our Messiah is portrayed as loving and compassionate and holding a lamb in his arms and tender and forgiving and overwhelming in grace. Those things are true, but he's also the judge of the earth. He's also the one who's going to come as a warrior and fight for Israel. He's also the one that will pour out his wrath on the unrighteous. There is a side to him that the world has not seen, and when they begin to see it, will they become rejecting of him and also then of those who follow him. Now, Yeshua said, you will be hated for my name's sake. Let us not be hated or turned away from or rejected because we're obnoxious, because we are apt to tell people how wrong they are. Let us not be rejected for a religious attitude toward others. If we're going to be rejected, let it be for the sake of Yeshua, his kingdom, and his righteousness. If we will demonstrate the name of Yeshua and power and ability Yah will indeed set us apart. We will be indeed unique in the earth, and there will be a line of distinction. But let us not get upset. Let's not get our feelings hurt when that distinction begins to separate us from even those that we thought we would never be separated from. It could be very well in the future, maybe even the near future, that someone would look at us and say, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to get out. Now, before we get asked to leave a country or a territory, it may be that we are being asked to leave a group, a society, a community, a fellowship, a congregation. We might imagine that those things could never happen. If you follow Yeshua and he's being rejected, understand you're going to be rejected as well. And that'd be an encouragement to you. 
Understand your need is to be identified with Yeshua and leave the rest to him. We'll talk more tomorrow. To then, shalom. Shalom.